terrible. Oh. Huh. Easy. So it's time to build up this Diamondback Ascent. I think it's a 1989. I'm just going by catalog photos and stuff. It's in quite a bit of a state. I'll go over some of the things that needs doing. <laughs> so there's a few things that's really cool about this bike. In particular, the straight fork. I'm, I'm a huge fan of like a straight fork, especially when it's got like that little bit of taper at the bottom there. This looks so sweet. Um, a few Haro have them. A couple other brands do them, but yeah, Diamondback, Haro, and then like the um, Project 2 Kona fork as well. They're slightly different, but yeah, straight fork. And this paint job, it's known to a lot of people as like the smoke effect. So it comes in like a few different colors that I've seen. I've seen them in like pink. There's a local company that does it. So like pink background and then black smoke over the top. A few other colors as well. So it's a nice old chromoly frame. Well, at least the main tubes are anyway. So chromoly main tubes. And it's got this really strange cable guide around the seat tube here. So the cable goes in, through and then around. So we'll be doing a single speed. Um, I did a poll actually, and then a friend mentioned I should do a dingle speed. So because it has horizontal dropouts, I'm more inclined to do like a single speed build. They just look really clean too, without any shifters or shifter cables going to the rear. It actually has the original Diamondback grips as well, with some of the worst case of sticky grip I've ever seen. It's terrible. Like, what is that? <laughs> another another funny little thing about this bike is that whoever put this Dotec drive side crank arm and chain rings on, um, they didn't really check to make sure it cleared properly. So every time you pedal, that's not doing it now. You just have to take my word for it. Under power, the crank arm flexes and it smacks the Stay, as you can see there. So we'll start by stripping it down, getting rid of all the nasty stuff. Take it back to just the frame really. I like to spray a bit of penetrating oil down the seat tube just so it works its way down into the bottom bracket and hopefully it eases it up a little bit. I do that first just so it has a bit of time to work its magic. Also you can see here that it has an old Panarasa smoke tire on the rear. So normally that is a rear tire and then you put the Panarasa dart on the front. I'm not really a huge fan of these tires um, and they also are quite old so I'll be replacing them anyway. So despite some of the corrosion most of the disassembly went pretty smoothly and the crank had obviously been changed at some point so that popped off pretty nicely as well. Wipe the threads out. Plastic. What is up? Is it? Wait, what? Did they put shims on the spline? They put shims. Yep. 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 So I'm guessing the non drive side crank arm had like a little bit of slop. Um, over time, they sort of wallow out a little bit. And I guess they decided to fix it just with a shim. Um, you should just replace the crank arm, but whatever. But now I have to remove this weird plastic bottom bracket, which like that looks like its own proprietary system. I, I haven't seen, I don't have the tool to get this up. So that's fun. So it looks like there's like a little bit of pink, sort of like a pink flake or pink tinge to the paint. So I thought there would be a little bit more pink under the derailleur clamp, but it doesn't look too pink. Yeah, this bike has a really weird paint job. So as well as 
it being like the smoke effect, it looks like it has sort of like a pink tinge to it. Um, you can sort of see it in person a bit better, but I touch back on this a bit later. I just sort of use my leg to sort of hold the front wheel so it doesn't just rotate around. And then you find out that the top nut is stuck and it's annoying you. Oh, fuck you. I stabbed myself. You can see like the indent. I don't know if you can see that, but I stabbed myself like right in the booby. Oof. Yuck. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but in the clear coat, you can see quite a bit of pink. Well, I can see it. It sort of shows up on camera. Yeah. You probably can't see it on the rest of the smoke. Um, you can see it sort of like on the curves and stuff in person but you can definitely see it on the stereo tube up here. So yeah, they used pink in the clear coat, which is pretty cool. Yeah, really don't skimp on the grease, especially in like the lower headset. So I feel pretty good about getting it out. It just might be like a bit more of a hassle rather than just shoving a tool on and undoing it. Um, I could probably find the tool, but off the top of my head, I don't know what it is and I know I don't have it. So rather than waiting like a few days. It's near Christmas, so getting the tool will probably won't even get here in time. Uh, so we're just gonna go like the, the destructive route. So I tried a couple of things, but what ended up working was I basically just cut two long straight edges on it, then shoved it in the vise. I was expecting like a big huge struggle because I've had this with plastic body brackets before where like the um, the removal face of it sort of strips away or breaks away from the threads so I was expecting that and then I thought oh, I was gonna have to cut the threads out Too easy. and it's gonna be this huge kerfuffle but now it's actually pretty easy I won't be using much of this I think probably only a couple of parts so I could actually use these on the single speed build, but this one is quite a bit tweaked. Um, so looks like most of it is straight and then it comes down and sort of tweaks off to the end there. It would, it would work okay, but it just looks a bit funky. Might be able to straighten that out and use it. I've got other levers, so I don't know about those just yet. Uh, the stem that will clean up, it's got like a bit of tape residue, then a little bit of rust on the front there. But it does have the original Diamondback stamp on the front and then the decal as well. So we'll try and clean that up just to have like an original piece on there. <laughs> the factory headset, the top looks like it's okay. Um, the bottom it might need like new bearings and a new cage. Um, the rest of it is okay, it just needs a bit of a tidy up. The grips, they're terrible. I cut this one off because that's just awful. I normally go for new grips anyway. Brakes, I don't think the red suits this bike. Maybe if that pink clear coat was there, it would look a bit better. Um, these ones, I'll probably, so I'll probably just go for like a matching front and rear brake. Duralia, I could use that as like the chain tensioning dingle system. I don't know yet. I've got like nicer looking shorter cage Duralias that I'll probably use. So really this is about all that I'll use. Um, so for gearing, I've got a couple of different cogs, um, cranks, got some STX cranks. Mainly using the STX because I have this chain ring. So this is a 94 BCD, which suits STX and some LX cranks. Um, and it's a 38 tooth. So other than those few parts, we'll be using the original wheels, seat, uh, maybe the seat post. 
The tires, I've just got some sort of all-terrain tires for it. Handlebars, I've just got some riser bars. They're a little bit wider than the stock one too. And as for brakes themselves, the brake calipers, I'll have some cantilever brakes that I'll put on. I just don't know what spec I want. I was thinking maybe some black ones. I've got some black STX that I might put on. Uh, should look okay. Otherwise, I've got some silver alloy ones that I can put on. I just don't know what will look the best, so I'll try a couple and go from there. So the frame is quite dirty, but before we get to that, I like to use some Penetrol. So this is basically just an internal frost prevention. I like this because it spreads really well. Um, it's available locally. I've used it for a while and it seems to do the job pretty nicely. So there are other things that you can use. This is just what I use. So basically you just spray it in every vent tube that you can find. I'm also sort of in the holes down in the seat tube into the, all the internal parts of the frame. This stuff, it sets to a bit of a dry film, so try and not get in any threads or just remember to wipe it out quickly. Um, you can also just throw like a little bit of grease before you do this. And then just like frame saver, you just shake the frame around and you can go outside and sort of spin it around quite a bit. Just try and spread it as much as you can, turn it upside down and everything. So this is really optional. Um, you don't have to do this, but I like to do it just to sort of future-proof the frame a little bit. Um, it just means that someone isn't gonna have to keep an eye on like these rusted spots um, because it can eat down like through the frame. So just to sort of minimize that, it works really well at stopping the rust. Um, you don't have to paint over this, but you can if you want to, it acts as like a primer. But this is pretty much good to go. You can also like clear coat over it if you want it looking a little bit differently. And it only turns black if it hits like rusted steel. So if you do accidentally use it over some paint, then it's not really going to affect like the paint at all. Uh, but it sort of dries like a little bit off clear. So I just try and be a little bit careful. So I did straighten out that lever a little bit. I just put the end in a vise and just bent it back a little bit. And it looks pretty good, so I think I'm going to use these levers. But they need a bit more tidying up. So this surface here just needs like a bit of paint. So I'll strip them down, give it a bit of a sand up, then use some matte black or satin black spray paint. So for whatever reason, one of the previous owners decided to cut off the thumb shifter mount. So these are an old Mountain Alex group set. So that cut needed tidying up before I painted that. I, just, I couldn't leave it just rough like that. So I filed it up, then painted it all. It should look pretty good once it's all dry. This is satin black, so it should dry a little bit less glossy than that. And these are the STX black brakes. They look a little bit nicer. I sort of compared the two. 
um, the silver alloy and then the black. The black definitely looks a little bit better on this frame. They just need a bit of a clean up.
So some of these clips here are a little bit like shaky and stuff, but I left them in because you can sort of see the the pink that's in the clear coat. Um, I just thought it was cool to see. You don't really see it in most of the other clips, but you can see it here for some reason. So the front wheel that came on the bike, it wasn't original anyway, so I decided to swap it out. Um, it did have quite a bit of rim wear, so I swapped over this one that has a dual Alex front hub, and the rim's in a lot better condition as well. So moving on to the dingle setup, I decided to use just some old cassette rings. So these are just off an old 7-speed cassette, so you can pull them apart just by sort of pulling the pins out. Um, I decided to use these just because I have like, lots of them and they're all in different ratios. So it's a lot cheaper and more economical to just sort of temporarily set it up with this old cassette rings. And then from there I would use like the proper gearing. The cogs that I showed earlier were 1 8th width because that was when I was going to use just a single speed setup. Um, but I've since changed that into a dingle speed, so I'll need some 332 width uh, cogs for it. That's just so I can fit the 332 chain um, onto the rear derailleur that I use for shifting it. You can also use like a, a chain tensioner and then like adjust that, but that's a whole other thing. Um, I just decided to use a red derailleur just because then it has the barrel adjuster. It makes it a lot sleeker. Um, you can actually use a shifter, which I was going to use, like sort of remote mounted, so it can be like a bit more hidden. So then I just dialed in the high limit screw. So that just means that the derailleur can't shift off the smallest cog easy. Um, and then I threw in, a, that's actually a road brake cable. It seemed to fit the barrel adjuster really well. Um, otherwise you would just use like a normal gear cable cut down. So this just allows for that barrel adjuster to pull the derailleur over a little bit to shift gears. So you do have to get off the bike to shift gears, but you don't have to like 
get your hands on the chain or anything like that, so it's like mess free. Now to make this even easier, I decided to use a longer limit screw for the low gear. This just means that it makes it easier when you set that gear, so you don't have to like sort of finesse it to change. You can just undo it until it stops, and so when it hits that screw limit, and then you can just um, jump back on or pedal the bike and keep going. Just makes things a little bit easier. So as you may know, there are a few ways to do a dingle speed setup. You can do it without a red derailleur and just um, like pull the rear wheel out and then shift it over, like have two cogs and two chain rings. I decided to go this way just so I don't have to do that every time. Um, especially with horizontal dropouts, it makes it like a little bit more complicated. Um, it's a little bit easier if you have vertical dropouts to do that because you just pop the wheel out, sh shove the chain over and put the wheel back in. I think each of the ways they sort of have their ups and downs so you just have to figure out what's best for you what you sort of prefer and this is the way that i decided to do it this time so if you remember from earlier i did the rust converter so you can see that on the chain stay there on the left of the screen and um, i forgot to show like a bit of a, a close-up after photo but you can see it there so that's basically how the rust converter ends up
So riding the dingo speed bike was really similar to riding a single speed. Like you don't feel the need to shift gears or anything. It's not constantly sort of in your head. You know, it's not something that you're doing constantly. But every now and then, if you want to, you can just adjust that barrel adjuster and shift gears. Cool. So the experience is <laughs> largely the same as a single speed bike. Here. Aesthetically, it's not quite as appealing as a single speed, especially one that doesn't have a chain tensioner. There's something just so simple and elegant about that single speed, like with horizontal dropouts and stuff. But I really like the bike. I think I'd change the gearing. I'd probably put like a, a bit of a lower gear on just so I can get up some steeper hills. Because the higher gear, it seems nice, like a, a nice cruising speed. You can sort of get up to speed a little bit, but it's not too fast. Uh, but certainly it would be nice to have like a bailout gear just so you can go up some steeper hills. It's really cool bombing this downhill with these these tires on them. They sound really cool when they get up to speed. So the frame itself, it felt really nice to ride. Um, despite it being a presumed high 10 for the most part, like you saw earlier in the video, it said that the, <laughs> the main tubes were chromoly, but I guess that leaves like the rear triangle and stuff to be high 10. So I didn't have any issues with chain drop, even with this quite a hold Shimano 600 arabesque uh, rear derailleur. So it doesn't really have too much tension on it, so if you're doing like a off-road dingle speed build, then yeah, definitely I would go for a, like a Shimano Z or something with a clutch mechanism in it. Something short cage, because you don't really need the long cage, obviously, with two gears. Something pretty simple, but a, a clutch would definitely help off-road, because you can see that chain slapping around just with this chain tension on this derailleur. So if I did this again, I'd probably do it pretty much the same, really. Um, and it'd be really nice to have a, a dingle speed bike, possibly as like an off-road bike. So I'll be doing this again, and I think I'll do it about the same, because it's just nice to have that barrel adjuster to swap it out. So thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you in the next one. I've got a couple of cool builds coming up. I've got my Bridgestone MB5 that I've doing some mods to, and a Kona Lava Dome as well. That Bridgestone video should be out this week. Just have a few more clips to record. So thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you soon. Bye.